right. Hi. Um, this is Allie from Reigns of Life, and she's here with us today to um, show us a little bit about the farm over at Reigns of Life, and she's going to um, share our favorite miniature horse bandit with us today. Um, so Allie, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you can take the reins. Thank you, Amy, for handing over those reins. Yes, my name's Allie. I'm an instructor here at Reigns of Life, we're a therapeutic riding center in South Bend, Indiana. We also have a location in Michigan City, but I'm here with a few friends today, a few couple of human friends and lots of animal friends. I want to introduce you to one of our interns named Deja. Hello. And then we're also here with Anna who will be holding on to some of our horses. Hi. Anna and Deja are from IUSB and they are social work students here for their internship. So today I want to introduce you to some of our equine friends here at Reigns. Equines are horses or ponies or even donkeys. And we have some of those friends here today. One thing about determining if something is a horse or an equine is a horse or a pony is based on their size. So we have to measure how big they are. And instead of measuring and you know how many feet, how many inches some things, some things are, we use hands. We have to measure in hands for how we measure horses. So here's a picture of a hand here, just for fun. And a hand, when we measure a horse, a hand is equal to about four inches. So Amy is gonna have a nice activity sheet, a little booklet for you guys that you can share on social media and check that out. And you'll get this worksheet, this worksheet here that you can fold in half and measure things around your home and in your yard or even your dog or cat and see how many hands they are. I've got my first friend hanging out with us right here. This is Donkey Dar. Hi, Donkey. Donkey is a miniature Mediterranean donkey. <laughs> and his name is Donkey Dar. The people that donated Donkey to us, their last name was Dar. And it just kind of stuck. So Donkey Dar lives here with our friend Bandit, who we'll meet in a little bit along with a full-size horse, Tessa, who we'll meet later on. But first, we need to measure donkey. So I'm gonna have Anna use her lead rope and clip up to donkey dollar's halter to see if we can have him stand nice and still for us while we measure how many hands donkey dar is. I printed off two of those activity sheets and cut out a couple of different hands here. That way it makes the measuring easier. We can just layer them one right on top of the other one to measure how many hands some things is. Some things are. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and have you step on this. Okay. So it doesn't fly away. We'll leave the book right here. Can I bring Donkey Dar over here? Oh, he's moving. Sometimes he doesn't like to move because he is a little bit stubborn. I don't know about any of you out there. Are you stubborn at home sometimes? <laughs> but Donkey Dar sometimes goes to parades with us around town. So you might see him and wave at him in a parade. He used to go to assisted living centers and nursing homes to hang out with the residents there. But one time he was very stubborn and didn't want to leave. I guess he was having too much fun. He got the elevator up and down for like two hours. Donkey Dar does not go on miniature visits anymore. Like we said, donkey a little stubborn. So when measuring a horse is hands, you measure from the bottom of their hook. So you hold the hands up and then you measure it from the top of their shoulders here. The lower shoulder here. Withers over here. These are his withers. So we're going to measure from the bottom of his hook all the way up. I'm going to need your guys' help, though. You have to help me count. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> now. Don't eat him. <laughs> he was a little worried about it, so I left smelling first. All right. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, almost seven. I say about 6.5 hands is how tall our friend Donkey Dart is. Let's go meet Bandit and see how tall Bandit is. Okay, cool. <laughs> So Jay just unclipped from Donkey Dar. Now she has her lead rope and she's going over to Bandit. And Bandit is younger than Donkey Dar. Bandit is 16 years old and Donkey Dar is 17 years old. All right, so we have our miniature horse here, which is a breed of horse. He's not. Um, he's not a baby. He's 16 years old, right? So this is as big as he gets. And we're going to measure him from the bottom of his hoof up to his withers. Is up here, high bandit. Whoa, buddy. Here we go. Help me count. One. Not you, bandit. One, <laughs> two. two, three, four, five, six. Six and a half. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> so Donkey Dar and Bandit are about the same size. If we did an exact measurement, you might see a little bit of a difference, but they're pretty close. So us using our hands here, the four inches, gives us about a six and a half hands estimate for both Donkey Dar and Bandit. I talked to Bandit here and Bandit, was highlighted and they wrote a whole story about him the library did so if you haven't read it yet you should check it out it talks about him and his friends that he lives with let's meet his last friend that he lives with over here tessa tessa is 18 years old and tessa is a full-size horse she's not a pony she's a breed called a half layer and tessa has riders at reins of life that take lessons on her. Hi, Tessa. <laughs> you heard nickering. She's saying hello to you. Come on over here, Tessa. Hi, little one. So Tessa wears a grazing muzzle because we have to keep track of how much she eats. And she can only have so much grass and so much hay at a time. We have to limit her a little bit to keep her at a healthy weight. Otherwise, it might cause some health concerns. So she wears this grazing muzzle here, and when she pushes it up against her mouth, she can reach, <laughs> she can loose the little blades, blades of grass that poke through. Hi, little one. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and measure our full-size horse, Tessa. If she's bigger than 14.2 hands, it means she's a full-size horse. If she's smaller than that, those are called ponies. And some of our ponies live over next to us over here. They're all standing in the sun right now, sunbathing because it's a beautiful warm day. <laughs> so these are Tessa's withers. So a little bit taller than our friends Donkey Dar and Bandit. And we're gonna measure all the way from her tippy 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 toes or her hooves up her leg to her weather, her withers. All right, I need your help again. We gotta count. Okay. One, two, three. three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think I was a little bit off. Let's do this again. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Here, Tessa, stop eating. <laughs> She's actually closer to fifteen hands. And when she raised her head up a little bit. You kind of saw how her, her withers and her neck got a little bit higher. And I think if we have her take a step back, we get a better measurement so that her legs are nice and straight. Yes. 
But that's oh, Tessa. That's like a full size horse, and she's about 15 hands. Gotcha. That's amazing. Can you yeah. tell me how they decided on whose hand was the right measurement <laughs> for this? Because <laughs> hands are all different sizes. I have no idea whose <laughs> hand they decided to trace after on here, but they did mark four inches. Four inches. So this one to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hand's a little bit smaller than this one here, so I was not the the model for this cutoff. <laughs> is it is it like a standardized thing in the horse world for it to be a four inch hand going up the? Yeah, horse? so okay. a, yeah, a hand is just a unit of measure, like inches or centimeters is, but a hand is equal to four inches. This is the visual of a hand is just a cute way to remember what we call it. I love that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> So Tessa is the oldest horse in this paddock here, in this herd. She's also the biggest in this herd here, not in our property. I'll introduce you to the biggest one in our property. But Tessa is the biggest in this herd. Remember, we have Donkey Dar, that's very stubborn but sweet, and Bandit over there that are about the same size. Who do you think is the boss of this herd so the most dominant who's the boss who who's the leader who takes charge here in this herd well you know i think normally i would think it's the biggest but i i feel like maybe that might not be the case this time around that's right amy <laughs> it's not always about who's the biggest it's about personality right so mm -hmm. sometimes we assume that the biggest horse would be the most dominant or the leader the top of the pecking order but not here. Bandit is actually the leader of this herd here. He's the top of the pecking order, which means he's the boss. <laughs> and then after that, after that comes Tessa. She's next in the pecking order. And then although he's stubborn and sweet, Donkey Dar is at the bottom of the pecking order in this herd here. <laughs> so sometimes we assume that the biggest is the strongest and the bossiest. Not here. Our little our little miniature horse can sometimes be the boss and is the boss here in this one. So be careful about your assumptions sometimes. As somebody who's a short person, I I find comfort in this fact that that uh, <laughs> that this extends to the animal uh, world too. Absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes Bandit will even <laughs> he he's a quick little guy. He'll jump up in the air. And he'll grab onto that grazing muzzle you saw of Tessa's. And it's just him, you know, being bossy, playful, whatnot. But he surprises me every single time he does that. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. So we can go over and meet our biggest horse now. Um, and if we have time, we have a little story that maybe we can either read to Bud or we can come back over and read it to our friend Bandit. I'm going to let you think about that, Amy. And if you have any other friends join, you guys can choose who we read our story to. Sure, sounds good. So we're going to leave our halters on. We're going to be back a little bit. And then we always make sure close nice and tight. I'm sure sometimes at home you're told to close the doors and make sure you shut the drawers. Same thing here. When we're walking away from a paddock, we're always making sure the gates close. We do have extra gates on the property that are closed all the time. So if a horse does get loose or a donkey or a pony, they only have a specific area where they can run around. So that way we can catch them and take them back to their home.
rays all afternoon in the beautiful sun or snow. <laughs> but today they are staying in their paddock and they were served lunch hay. So we have volunteer feeders that come by and we'll get the hay ready for them and feed them their lunch hay. All right, we're opening up this gate here. Gate is coming through, Anna's coming through. And then we're closing the gate. Remember, because we always close the gates. All right, I see some horses up here. But we're looking for the biggest one that we see. What do you think, Amy? Ooh. Can you spot the biggest one yet? Well, it's a little hard to tell since they're they're different distances away from the camera. Yeah, that's true. At this point, we have Shadow coming over to say hello. Hello, Hi, Shadow. Hello, Shadow. Hello. What's up, buddy? He's a pretty big horse, but he's not the biggest here at Reigns. One of his best friends is the biggest horse. Well, let's go walk over and see him. All right. All right, I think he's coming to us. Hi, bud. Hi, bud. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. And Anna's going to go ahead and put his halter on. The way that we put halters on here, <laughs> Anna's, Anna's not the tallest <laughs> of our interns here. Um, so what she's doing, and that's very helpful, is we put the lead rope around our horse's neck. So that way, if they move around, we still have control over them. Mm -hmm. And she's taking his halter right now. And she's putting the nose band over his nose. And the leather head strap up and around his ears. Sometimes our horses like to help us with this part and they'll lower their head down. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> you, a little buckle. you got that ear in? Yeah. You're missing, you're missing an ear here. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Send the ear forward and kind of help out sometimes. Because he's got some big ears. Allie, we can't hear you right now, so I don't know um, if it's the wind or what, but um, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. now. Yep. Okay. We're going to move into the shelter or up, up, up against the side of it. Sure. Cut the wind out a little bit. We actually do that with the hay here. If it's a really windy day, we'll put the hay on a certain side of one of the shelters that they live in. So that way the hay doesn't blow around from the wind. That's awesome. Hay is kind of expensive, believe it or not. I, I can only imagine when you're feeding animals as big as Bud. <laughs> it's probably a lot of uh, hay. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. So Bud is the biggest horse on the property. He takes part in our therapeutic horseback riding program and our business. And he has riders that ride him that are working on physical, social, cognitive, and behavioral goals. Okay. He is 21 years old, which is a pretty good age for a horse, but we do have some horses that live to be in their mid thirties. And he is a breed called a Belgian draft. So you can look at his feet and those are, those are what draft hooves look like. They're really big. I would say they're way bigger than the other horses hooves. They're way bigger. <laughs> Hi buddy. All right, so we have our hands here. Mm -hmm. If we had to guess, how many hands do you think Bud is? Well, if Tessa was 15, I think Bud's going to be over 20, but I don't know how much. Oh, okay, 20. That's my guess. 20 is my guess. We'll go with 20. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> so we're going to go from the bottom of his hook here all the way up to his withers. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
16, 17. Almost. Almost. Hands, which is pretty big for a horse. Oh, that's big, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Bud is the biggest in this paddock here, but he is also the most top of the pecking order here. Okay. So some of the friends that live here with Bud, you met Shadow earlier. This is Pongo. Over here. Say hi, Pongo. <laughs> and Pongo is one of Bud's friends as well. I'd say his best friend would probably be Shadow, but then Pongo's close second. Hi, baby. Coming over to say hello to us. Hello, Pongo. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yes. Horses Terrible. are very social animals. That's why they like to live in herds. And they they can tell if someone is trying to be friendly to them. Because they can recognize our heart rate and how fast we're breathing. So if we're breathing really fast and we're kind of nervous and our heart rate's going like boop, 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 boop out of our chest. Horses can tell and then they get a little nervous. When you're nice and relaxed, the horse will normally come up to you and kind of give you kisses and check you out. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so Amy and friends, you guys must be very relaxed. <laughs> it's coming right over to Deja. So we are gonna go ahead and if we have time, Amy, we have a little book that we can read. Would you like us to read this book to Bud or should we go read it to Bandit and his friends? Well, I thought I would launch a poll and see if um, the few people we have joining us want to weigh in. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll and we can all um, figure out where we want to go. Um, if if uh, we're going to get any. Oh, all right. We've got one. We've got one answer so far. Um, OK, it looks like. We have a tie. Oh my goodness. Oh. We have a tie. So um, I think I'm going to be the tiebreaker. And I think we should go back and read the Bandit. I think reading the Bandit would be good for our Horsing Around with Bandit program here. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have Pongo help us introduce the book and then we'll go over and read it to Bandit. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I think that'd be great because <laughs> Pongo okay. seems really interested. <laughs> Hey, what's up, buddy? What is up? <laughs> so this book is actually the Reigns of Life book. It's called I Am, I Can, A Horseback Rider. And it's by one of our volunteers who has a whole series of these books. They're kind of sensory books. So we talk about smells and sights and what different things feel like to help you know what it would feel like to be at the barn. So we'll go over and show this to Bandit and his friends, and then we'll read you a short little story. And I know Amy's recording this, so if you want to read it again tonight and follow along before bed, that sounds great to me. <laughs> All right, let's go over and see our minis again. Thank you, Pongo. Thank you, Bud. Bye, Pongo. Bye, Bud. Bye, Shadow. Bye, Shadow. <laughs> So we're headed over to a gate again. You remember, what do we do after we open the gate? We close the gate. Close the gate. Here we go. And if you do like this book or any virtual lesson, our virtual lessons for RAINS are on our Facebook page. There's a free new one every week. And then this can be accessed actually on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon. A little fun story about horses. <laughs> so along with the horses here at RAINS and our uh, equines in general, so our ponies and minis and donkeys, we actually have two cats. I don't know if we'll see them around this afternoon at all. They usually are out and about adventuring during the day. But we have a cat that's named Oreo. And we have a little kitten that's named Seabiscuit. Oh, that's so cute. All right, we're back, friends. <laughs> Right. 
Hannah. Do you want me to do it again? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going over to stand it here. Yeah. All right. So here's Bandit. We're going to hand the book over to Deja here. Uh, you might hear a train coming. At Reigns of Life, we have a train track right here on the other side of these trees. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> and our, our horses get used to it. When they first move to Reigns, they get a little nervous and scared about it. But after about two weeks, they, they think it's no big deal. So you'll see that there's no reaction to the train noise for many of these horses and equines and donkeys over here. All right, so just a little train. All right, Deja has our book here. <laughs> there it goes. Bye train. Bye train. <laughs> All right. You can go ahead and put them up if you want to. So we don't get this behind. All right, Deja, when you're ready, you can share this book with us. All right, here we go. I am, I am, I can, the horseback rider. I am a horseback rider. I can ride lickety split. When I was told I was going to be a horseback rider, I was excited. I was so excited, I dreamed about myself on a big brown horse. I was sitting tall and proud in the saddle with the reins in my hands and a helmet on my head. The next day, my helper at the horseback riding school took me to a place in the barn called the tack room. In the tack room, there were saddles and halters, reins and bridles and helmets. It smelled like leather in there, like boot polish and the sweet scent of hay. On a wall, there were helmets of all sizes hung on hooks in neat rows. There were green and blue ones, red and purple and black helmets. My helper chose a shiny red helmet and with a kind smile said, this one should fit. But when she put it on my head, it felt hot and heavy and tight. I didn't want to wear the helmet and tried to take it off. My helper said patiently that I had to wear the helmet if I wanted to ride my horse. I thought about my dream and how happy I was to ride the big brown horse and how proud and brave I felt. So I snapped the helmet on under my chin. Then my helper showed me the grooming baskets all lined up on a shelf with the name of each horse on each basket. My horse's name was Hampton. Bring Hampton's basket, my helper said, as she led me out to where a big brown horse was tied by his stall. I stopped in my tracks. There he was. He was so big, much bigger than in my dream. I started to back away. But my helper gave me a gentle push and said, he's waiting for you to groom him. The helper showed me different brushes in the basket. There was the curry comb used to rub circles on his coat to loosen the dirt and dust. Then there was the hard brush, the soft brush and a brush to comb his mane and tail. Hampton stood still and strong and let me brush and brush until his coat was soft and clean. After the grooming, my helper showed me how to put on the fleece and the pack, then the saddle and girth, followed by the reins and a lead rope. I hooked and buckled everything and was proud of how my horse looked after all that work. My helper then handed me the end of the lead rope and together we led my big brown horse into the arena. In the arena, we led Hampton next to a set of stairs that I had to 
climb to get on my big brown horse. But as I climbed the stairs, I suddenly felt afraid. I no longer wanted to ride my big brown horse. I don't know why, but I no longer wanted to be a proud, brave rider either. It's okay, my helper said softly. You don't have to be afraid. You have been very brave and Hampton will be proud to have you as his rider. Now my helmet didn't feel so hot and heavy. It didn't feel so tight as my helper lifted me up and up. So high up, I felt like I was sitting on top of the world. And there I was, sitting on my big brown horse with the reins in my hands, the helmet on my head, and a smile on my face. You did it, my helper cheered. I knew you could. I am my horseback rider. I can ride lickety split. Wonderful. Thank you, Deja. That was <laughs> great. Thanks, Deja. Looks like Donkey Dar enjoyed the story. He came <laughs> over to listen in close. Thank uh, you, Bandit, for being such a good listener. <laughs> we love we love all animals and people who love reading books. So that's fantastic. I love it. I have a few questions about the farm if you uh, have time to answer them for me. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Amy. Let's hear it. Well, so my first question is, is it seems like you guys have a lot of um, rules and, and like the focus is really on safety over there. Do you want to expand on why that's so important? Yeah, so safety is important and horses, big or small, can still be dangerous. So at Reigns of Life, we follow some very specific rules. And a neat part about these rules is if you see an instructor like me or a volunteer, if you tell them, hey, you're not, so you're not following the rule, they know you can be. <laughs> so listen in close and I'll tell you the rules. At Reigns of Life, we never walk behind a horse. Horses can see almost around their whole entire body, except below their chinny chin chin. So down here, <laughs> their chinny chin chin or directly behind them. And that's because their eyes are located on either side of their head like donkey dars here. Hi buddy. <laughs> Another rule that we have here at Reigns is we do feed our horses lots of treats. So they get fed breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a bunch of snacks in between. But our fingers sometimes look like their favorite treat or resemble their favorite treat, which are carrots. So when we're feeding our horses treats, we always use a bucket to feed our treats, and we always keep our hands and fingers away from horses' mouths, which is called their muzzle. Another rule that we have at Reigns is that we don't run around the horses. Horses know that we're their friends, but that's because we've built a relationship with them and trust through centuries of humans and horses working together. But if we start running around and jumping around the horses, we could spook them and scare them. And we don't want to ruin the trust that we have with them or scare our friends here. So we never run around or chase or try to yell and scream and spook our horse. Great question, Amy. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to either um, submit it to the chat or if you want to unmute, you can just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask the question. We're happy to answer questions from you guys. Um, while, while our uh, participants are thinking about questions, if they have any, um, can you tell us more about who else lives on the farm and um, how maybe how many there are? Yeah, so here in South Bend, we used to have quite a few more, but we do have horses that retire. And that means that they no longer have to work here at the barn, even though it's a great spot to work. But they retire and they go to their new forever home. And sometimes that means that they just get to be someone's pet in their pasture and they just get treats all day, which is fine by us. Um, but we did have some retire. So right now we have 14 here in South Bend. And that includes our biggest, just like Bud, all the way down to our smallest one, just like Donkey and our mini horse here. And then we have our two cats, Oreo and Sea Biscuit, that are supposed to be working and doing stuff for us around the barn, but usually they're just napping either in their beds or in the office or in the sunshine like it is today. <laughs> gotcha. And so you have another location in Michigan City, is that correct? 
We do. We do. We have a, a very large bar in Michigan City. We've been around here in South Bend since 1978. Wow. That's we've been here a long time. Long time. <laughs> and we have a barn in Michigan City that's been around since 2007. We don't have as many horses there right now, but we actually are getting two brand new horses to us today that will be arriving in Michigan City. And then we might get a new one here in South Bend Barn at the South Bend Barn pretty soon. And that just means that we can serve more riders here at Reigns and any of our programs like the therapeutic riding one that I that I mentioned or carriage driving or interactive vaulting, which is really cool. It's like basically doing gymnastics on the back of a horse. So very wow. difficult, but a lot of fun. Um, so lots of different programs that our horses take part in. That's amazing. You guys sound like you're busy all the time. Are you are you still kind of not super busy because of COVID or are you getting back into the swing of things? We have a lower number of people coming to the barn um, just due to COVID, sure. um, but our highest number of riders is usually in the summer. So we should see a pretty big increase for our summer riders. And then a few of our instructors have already received the shots. I've received my first one uh, last week. <laughs> so we're very excited. Um, so we should start to see things pick up, but we still stay very, very busy especially with those virtual programs that we have going on, like our Reading Buddies program. So if you want to read a book to a horse, you can sign up for a Reading Buddies appointment uh, through our website at reinsoflife.org um, or visit our, web, our Facebook page for more of those virtual lessons that we have going on or free carriage rides, uh, virtual carriage rides, like on our YouTube channel and whatnot. That's great. Well, I want to thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you want to add, Allie? Uh, if you want to come by and see the barn, just give us a call. We love giving tours and introducing you to what we do here at Reigns. So just give us a call. We're happy to give you a tour. Wow. Um, but yeah, just we love hanging out with you guys. And we hope to see you on site at the library or on site here soon in the future. Yeah, we, we hope to be able to do some outdoor events this summer. So we'll hope to see you guys uh, at the library at one of our many locations. Um, hopefully in the future. And I want to thank everybody who came out today. We're so excited to be able to bring Bandit to you guys because he's just so much fun. And like Allie mentioned earlier, we have a really fun article about Bandit in our Unfold that is um, just super fun. Uh, if, if any of your adults are interested, we're also doing the one book program this April um, and we're reading the book True Grit, which is why we were inspired to come visit Bandit because there's a, there's a couple horses in that book. Um, so yeah, so you guys, thank you so much for coming out today. We re really appreciate having you. Um, and I'm going to uh, say goodbye to our, our big friends, big and little friends here. It's always fun to make new friends. Um, so Tessa and Bandit and Donkey Dar, it was really great hanging out with you today. So thanks for everything. Great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>